And now I talk a little bit about, again, meaning of the empowerment. That basically many of you already know that. But again, empowerment is, is the one of the very special techniques of the Vajrayana Buddhism. Buddhism and Vajrayana Buddhism, as said, the Vajrayana teaching had so many methods, so many skills that instantly connecting and upholding the result of the enlightenment or result that what we're looking forward. Instantly, we are connected to that nature. Therefore, Vedayana teaching is known as, as he said before, as you all know, basically, the result of yanas. Because we're not waiting for a long time, graduation, instantly we're, we're connecting and jumping in a way to the result. And the result is what? Enlightenment. When you reach the enlightenment, what is? Then everything is enlightened status. That means, in the Vajrayana terminology, use three Vajra status. These three Vajra status, poem, song, and space, all are enlightened status. Status. And this empowerment, connecting, ushering, and introducing this, the poem, song, spirit, are enlightened. That means, out of form, out of song, out of spaces, as well as our own form, our own song, our own mind is enlightened status. State. That introducing instantly by the blessings of the Buddha and lineage, our meditation and our power of the reciting the mantra and through the ritual implement or the objects, we instantly within that status. Status. Instantly. And that is known as then the empowerment. And to discovering our one way, discovering our basic nature of our in in or discovering our great mysteries of the nature, out then in. And that is known as the empowerment in the one. And the empowerment terminologies then I think many of you you heard. You heard. Is Abhi Sheka or Abhi Kensa? Kensa. Abhi again is Sanskrit word. In the debate is called Thor Lok. Okay, Wang. Wang. And uh, Thor and Lok. And this, if we translate this, pouring and dispelling. Pour, pouring, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Pouring and dispelling. Dispelling. What is pouring? Pouring the lineage blessings, the blessings of the Buddha, life lineage blessings, living lineage blessings. That is pulled and that is transmitted by our meditation, by our lineage blessings is pulled. And with that pulled, what is dispelling? Said dispel the duality, the habit patterns, those unnecessary things that are all dispelled. Where it dispelled in the great emptiness, great wisdom status is dispelled. And that is known as the Thor and the Lok. Then is there there's a word also Abhi. Abhi is has meaning also actualizing. Abhi means direct perceptions, direct status. 
So this again, that is the same thing as we have been talking. This realization is not just we're waiting for to come, but this discovery is instant. This discovery is right now. We're going to behold. We're going to experience this. Therefore, it is Abhi. Abhi right now. We're going to discover and we're going to experience of the form, sound, space in a three Vajra states. Vajra form, Vajra sound, and Vajra space right now. And that is not what it means the Abhi. Abhi and a direct perception status. So that is briefly meaning of the Abhi Cheka or Abhi Kensa. Kensa, and this is the what the empowerment is. And then again, of course, empowerment is self. Self to do this empowerment, and then again need a lot of good things ourself to kind of prepare ourself. And the first of all, the preparation is our joy and the devotions. This joy and the devotion is not just only the, during the practice or the empowerment, but always really we need this joy and the devotions. Always is very important. When we have more joy and the devotions, then our kind of, it makes our spiritual so beautiful, so special. Spiritual. Without the joy and the appreciations or the devotions, then our practice will become kind of mostly become very, very weak. Weak. Not just only that, then practice become almost like become what they call it? Expire. <laughs> <laughs> Expire. The kind of dead stems. What called when we see stems on the the, the foods. Sometimes expiration death is uh, this and this and this. And we like to keep up this fresh. Then joy and devotion is really the, that. That will keep the fresh. Fresh. And not just say to keep the fresh of the practice, but it's keep the fresh of our courage, confidence, our self more meaningful. Life becomes very meaningful. And we have the joy and appreciation, devotion. Life is not just boring. Boring and also not just uh, we're dragging down here. Hear that. Then life becomes very joyful, meaningful, rewarding, as, as mentioned before. It's very, very special. It's not just we feel we're fulfilling something beautiful. It's not just a feeling. That, but truly, if we have that, we're making beautiful impression to ourself, our life, and meaning, and ahead. We're making beautiful impressions. Every step becomes quite good. We can look back, we did good. Life is beautiful, good. We can look ourselves now, we're doing good. We are happy, we're nice. We look ahead, it will be the same. It will be continuity. And therefore, joy and devotion and appreciations are not just only during the practices, but always is really important. Then practice time is so important. The practice makes so special, so meaningful. It creates the situation, circumstance. is so perfect to practice when we have that. It's just like planting the seed in the garden. Garden, soil is good. And then there is like good, beautiful, perfect moisture, beautiful sunshine, perfect temperature, and then it just bring the growth without any, any, any doubt. Similarly, this joy and the devotion, and then appreciation, as I'm saying, this is really so special. It's like they, they are like sun. They are the warm temperature. They are the perfect soil. If we have that, then we can move forward. Our spiritual, the result is right here. So therefore, then those, of course, practice time, empowerment time is very, very important. Then when we receive empowerment or when we're receiving empowerment, well, we are practicing, well, we are visualizing like things, what things we have to also 
trying to not think. Intellectual ideas. Intellectual ideas, of course, when we're starting, is so important. When we're starting learning, those times, inquiring, asking, questioning, those are all important. That's why Buddha Shakyamuni said in the teaching, you must examine yourself. You're starting, and that's what in the Buddhism always called the three wisdoms. Wisdom of studying, wisdom of contemplation. Contemplation is inquiring, discussing, thinking, analyzing, answering, and discussing. And those all is that is what is so important. But when it comes to the practice such as meditation or the practice of the visualization and such as also empowerment, then we should not question it. That time, question, discussing, inquiring things, all put inside. You must stay in the course, course of that, and stay with joy, devotion, Meditate as in the teaching set or as in the empowerment instruction set. Be in that status with confidence, courageous. And this is also in the and the teaching. And as many of you know, when we have that confidence, it's called fearlessness. Fearlessness status. If we start questioning during the practice, during our meditation, we are inviting the ego clinging. And we are shaking our meditation. We're really undermining that. And therefore, we should put all those in sight, put completely sight, and that uh, be in that state. state. Then, definitely, we receive empowerment. We're practicing that, also practice time. So those are very important. And so that means joy, devotion, and as well as our, in a way, confidence, and be in that state, unshakable meditation and stable, stable status. And that is the, the practice, and then receiving empowerment.